for the ones yeah. that have gone really well, um, generally yeah. what are sort of the big rocks or the pillars do you feel like um, have have worked well in those successful re- return to play where the athletes not only return to play but they're performing really well, they're super confident um, yeah. and yeah, your markers were hit in a timely manner and, you, and you've like, yeah, that job was well done. Um, when you look back at those yeah. ones, what, what, are, what are the sort of the key areas um, that you now, after you get experience, you now really know you need to, Put in, put in a lot of time and energy into ensuring that you're, you're maximising that return to performance? Yeah, I think it, it comes back to, your, I guess, your system and your plan um, and how well you're doing that. So um, Marshall Stockton, who's out now our head physio, was our rehab physio during the time that I was I was working into, um, really intensely in rehab. Um, and we used to sit down every, at the end of every day and review that day. Um, and it's really the um, plan the work, do the plan like in terms of making and just continually do that cycle and reviewing where you're at. Um, so I think if the most successful rehabs I've been a part of, we've just been really well planned. Um, and we've been, and by that where we've planned for different, um, I guess, variations of the rehab course. So where where is this going to take us? Because um, it's definitely not the same every time. And what about the process of um, loading and how to load, you know, specific injured tissues? Um, yeah. What's it significant? you know, significance in the rehab process? Well, it's, this is actually one of the areas I, I feel that re- being uh, a rehab s and and working intensely in this space um, is really valuable as you, like, as you learn as an s coach. So um, learning when is it appropriate um, to load an injured tissue. Um, so, for instance, if we're, if we're talking about a hamstring, how early are you going to introduce isometric load? How early are you going to return to run? Um, when can you go from your isometrics and build onto your next stage of that rehab? And everyone has different hamstring templates, so I won't go through exactly what ours is. But I think working in s c teaches you, exposes you to a whole heap of different injuries. So it might be bone stress, it might be joint, it might be muscle, it might be mus- muscular tendinous junction. Um, and building your experience of working with each of those categories of injury and then learning how to actually, I guess, um, stimulate that tissue in a rehab setting. What about gaining an in-depth knowledge about uh, you know, functional anatomy? How important is that for in the context of high-performance sport and, and rehabilitation? Yeah, well, it's very similar to what I was just saying, I guess. But for me, that's been um, a huge area of development over the last probably eight years that I've been at Fremantle. And a lot of it has been from being exposed to different injuries um, and then learning about how you can load them safely when you're ready to load them. Um, I think, um, again, that's not an area that when I went to university anyway, it was super in depth. Um, Like you do a basic level of, you know what um, the muscles of the hamstring are and you know the quadricep muscles. Um, But in terms of um, how, um, I guess, to rehab um, something um, intently, um, but also further to that, um, what, if we're working with, say, a navicular, for instance, what inserts on the, onto the navicular? Um, and then from that instance, what do we need to avoid in early stage rehab? So um, that's one that you might learn through experience. So I guess over the last sort of six six years, how, how, how far have you seen from a technology point of view, um, mm-hmm. uh, methodologies, uh, how, how far have they sort of advanced in the industry of AFL uh, reconditioning? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess we're just much more objective now. So I guess we've always had dynamometers in my time. Um, so we've always, I guess, felt like we've had enough measures. <laughs> like, um, But now uh, we've, we can be very objective with all of our athletes. And generally we have baselines as well, um, which is one of the luxuries of elite sport. Um, I know in community sport or sub elite levels, you're not going to have this. Um, but uh, products like dual force plates um, that we use, um, like the force frame. So we've got dynamometry around hips. Um, for given guys, we've got hamstring or quad dyno. Um, we've got base level um, jump data for both, I guess, counter movement jumps, but also repeat contacts and so more a fast v slow counter movement. For the coach's perspective, maybe the students perhaps are listening or perhaps they're interning at a club and um, they've heard this and they're now super eager to... Um, maybe be a high performance manager, strength and power coach, mm. but now they're open to the rehab role as well. What are some yeah. sort of key traits or professional development that you can be doing um, to help, I guess, prepare you for this role, do you think? 
Yeah, um, I think there's plenty of things. So um, to put it as, well, Simon Harris again, to give him another a mention, as he said at the end of his presentation last week, the rehab S&C is a brilliant role and you should want to work in it. Like I, I really, really enjoyed it and I truly believe that's where I've learned the most so far in my, in my career. Um, in terms of what you should do if you want to learn about it, um, I think experiencing it is the number one thing. So, and it doesn't necessarily matter what level that's at. Um, so you might get involved at a sub elite level or it might be am an amateur level. Uh, it can be any sport, but um, for me, learning through experiences was the best way to learn about rehabs because there's, as you know, Jack, there are a lot of different rehabs that you encounter. And we've got a couple on our books at the moment that I've, I've never seen before. There's always a subtle tweak somewhere um, or there's always an added layer of complexity that you might have to deal with that you haven't dealt with before. 